Hello Mouseworks fans and welcome to another episode of Mouseworks Kit Review. And for this episode, I'm going to be showing an in-the-box review of the Ryefield MATV. And this is their new edition in 35th scale. Uh, they did have one before and it had the, the Crows unit on top. This has the Crows 2, which is the fully automated gun on top. So uh, we'll go through this kit uh, sprue by sprue and uh, show you what it's got and what it's not. So as always, please subscribe, like this video, and hit the bell to uh, get all the updates of all the videos that I make. And that way you get them right when I post them. So, and with that, let's fire it up. All right, folks, we've got the Ryefield models, uh, M1240A1, MATV, and the M, which comes with the M153 Crows 2 when full interior kit. Uh, just go around the box here. It's a little bit longer of a box. Kind of strange, it's tall instead of wide. Anyways, there's the three views of the side and the color info is from uh, MIG ammo and front sides are the same as the front of the box and then it shows a computerized kind of uh, CAD drawing of all the different things and they used to sell all these components separate these ones here uh, that are in the different colors they are all now in one kit so this is actually quite quite a nice added bonus so there we go and nothing on the back so let's get opening some of the uh, baggies and uh, show you where what it's got alrighty first up first sprue on top of the box of goodies uh, they are uh, put in these resealable bags which I do like easily open kind of hard to seal them back up when you push the pieces back in there but anyways alright so this is um, frame G and it actually has they've gone with the uh, open letter on the sprues which is really nice so that way you can see it really easily you don't have to sit there and uh, check every single one of these sprues you can see it at a distance so I hope all manufacturers get used to doing something like that so what we're looking at here is some of the interior parts uh, a little of this that and the other you can see there is a cable harness here which is very nicely done looks like it's slide molded has a tiny bit of flash not much just a little bit of cleanup with a knife and I think that'll be okay uh, we got the steering wheel got some uh, weapons here with wow that is incredible <laughs> detail on that the scope well I'll definitely get some close-ups for you on that one but that is those are just unbelievable and uh, some of the other th uh, parts, here's a CRT screen, uh, some uh, fire extinguishers, so forth. All right, let's go next up. Okay. And to be honest, this is the first Ryefield model I've ever bought. And uh, so this will be kind of something all new and a new type of review. I've reviewed lots of other brands. Some of the stuff is the same, so this will be kind of interesting to see what uh, what they got. Alrighty. This is Sprue A, and this looks like it is got a few of the chassis parts. Again, a little bit of flash. Uh, again, not real bad, just but there is some there that has to be cleaned up. So, and looks like. Some of the underbelly armor, um, some really weird slide molded stuff, but man, it's thin. It is really thin. Look at that. Almost like photo etched. That is awesome. Don't have to thin it myself. Don't have to replace it with photo etched. And this is some of the frame of the back of the vehicle, some of the fenders, and uh, lots of rivet detail, lots of real fine detail. Slide molded exhaust that's somewhat semi hollow. All right. Next up is, I see you're pretty much seeing this the same time I'm seeing it, so. Uh, 
Okay. This is B. Looks like some of the door. Uh, really detailed hinge marks. I mean, just these guys are just crazy with the detail. Excellent. Excellent. Sharp detail. Nice and crisp. Some of the window frames. And then here's a lot of the little pieces, parts, the brake lines and different things like that. Some of the uh, uh, pieces to the chassis. Um, bolt holes on the window inserts. Really nice. Recessed. They're not just uh, scribed. They're actually recessed. The detail on some of the stuff like this is some uh, equipment. Uh, there's the wipers. I mean, this thing is top notch on the detail. So, pretty impressed with that so far. I've heard a lot of good things about Ryfield. So, okay. Next up, we have a set that has two of the same identical screws. back since they're the same okay looks like a lot of the chassis pieces some of the uh, a-arms again really crisp super super crisp a lot of little tiny details it's gonna be kind of fun to do all this stuff a little bit of flash on the uh, the hooks there and looks like some u-joint detail there which is really nice really nice that they perforated the fenders and what's really nice about this tree is it's got springs on it which have been slide molded so they're completely hollow so there's no difference from this spring from a actual real spring so very cool instead of having it uh, non-hollow that is hollow and looks real good so liking that really liking that again I wish a lot of companies would get into doing that with the uh, springs and suspension or cars even I mean cars need to come a long ways uh, Ming has a uh, GT 40 that came out in 24 scale and it's unbelievable like their armor and I wish some of those other car companies would come along Fujimi is not too bad some Japanese companies aren't too bad to me but uh, they could be doing awesome work if they take some ideas from the, some of these companies so this is E the engine block again crisp detail real sharp they're not soft at all this is going to be a real joy to build a little bit of flash you can see on the fan unit there right there so i guess they just need to take a little more time on popping these or tightening down the uh, the mold when they shoot them to avoid that i would like to see that uh super de detail there uh turbo some horns which are slide molded and hollow very cool looking real good I like the fact that they give you the full interior uh, a lot of these small vehicles they don't have any detail at all and it would be nice to open up the hood so you can show it off or do a diorama okay we are up to sprue F this has the frame which is just incredible I mean look at all this little detail in here super sharp what's really nice is you don't have to build any of this I mean some of these companies would have actually you build every little component of this but these are all molded in one piece hopefully the fit is really good because the frames are always critical in trying to get them straight and otherwise the whole thing doesn't fit uh, some of the interior looks like it's got texturing like a padding texture which is really cool I don't know if you can see that I'll try to get a close-up of that but it's kind of a check pattern there fabric thing lower a arms u-joint uh, suspension and just some all kinds of goodies for the uh, lower chassis it looks like there's the bumpers which are all drilled out again a little flash on all those lower a arms gonna be a little bit of cleanup scraping mostly so, which is not too bad when you have that much detail it's kind of a, a offset of you know have to do a little work but again if they were a little more careful on their opening and closing of the mold might avoid that 
Okay, next one up is H. And this has some of the uh, roof details, some of the hatches. Um, wow. Machine gun, it's got the barrel is separate from the body and the cooling jacket. And the cooling jacket is drilled out. Man, that's going to be nice when they start marketing all these weapons by themselves. This one, incredible. There is a ammunition uh, feed right there. Really detailed. A lot of these kits don't come with ammunition belts, which is kind of frustrating. But those are really, really nice. And some of the top hatch there, some of the framing. Lots of, again, little, little parts. But that's going to be exciting about the weapons and the guns. Because a lot of times people just skip over them, paint them black, and they're done. And uh, they don't really get the detail they deserve. But they're sitting out right on the top of the vehicle. It's first, almost the first thing you see when you look at the vehicle. So they really should be the point of interest and be, in, be very detailed. Okay, so we got the glass. This is T. Super, super crisp glass. No distortion at all. I mean, it just it's completely straight when you look through it. It doesn't distort at all. You're going to have to paint some of it in an armored glass color, but man, that glass is top, top notch. All right. Get that one back in the bag before it gets scratched. Definitely don't want to get that one goofed up. Okay, this one is looks like some rubber parts. And for some of you who've been watching my videos, you know how I feel about rubber parts. I don't really like them at all, especially rubber tires. But whatever, we'll deal with them as we can. These look like some mud flaps. Um, not too bad. Oh, they're actually imprinted quite a bit uh, with the Oshkosh logo. That's kind of neat. That'll weather when I weather it, it'll look really nice. But again, I kind of don't like the rubber effect because they're hard to paint. Paint chips off of them, won't adhere to them. Very aggravating. Here's the, the most aggravating is the wheels, the tires, I should say. They look like they're vinyl. Um, if, yeah, I would suggest to some of these companies, if you're going to make a vinyl tire or rubber tire, make it solid. Make it completely solid. Don't make it squishy like this. I mean, yeah, it looks like a real tire, but it just makes it a pain in the neck to paint because the minute it gets tweaked any which way, the paint just chips right off. And I've had very bad experiences trying to make paint stick to the stuff. So um, they do make resin tires for this. I might have to replace them. These are nice tires. I mean, they're beautiful. They even have like a ribbed effect to them but they're vinyl okay would like to know what the thinking is is why they think that people like vinyl tires i'm guessing you just want to build it without any weathering or any painting and you just sand the the tread to make it look like it's worn they don't look half bad but they look like their showroom new okay here's the hood that's in a separate piece it's all been slide molded very cool. And lots of knockout pins on the belly. Uh, since this is going to be opening, I'm going to have to use, excuse me, my mouse work sanding pads to get those out. These will make it short work of that. Uh, just unfortunate that they're there. They're there. It'd be kind of nice if they uh, had those knockout pins that were on the edges where they have a little bit of sprue and then a knockout pin. But again, it looks real nice. So I don't mind doing a little bit of work on getting rid of those knockout pins. Okay, moving right along. We've got the main body. It's a nice sturdy box too, by the way. And I'll tell you, I had some bad experiences. I bought a Revell um, Gladiator aircraft and uh, yeah, they use those really crummy thin boxes. And I know they're trying to be eco-friendly, but you know, come on. Most of these guys keep their models in their collection for 20 years anyway, so it's not like they're going in the landfill. Anyways, uh, here is the body. Super, super nice. 3D, uh, or slide molded. Even has some detail on the ring here, the uh, little turret area ring. Um, 
good that it's got detail bad it's got a, a bunch of lockout pin marks not too deep again my mouse work pads take care of that but I wish I didn't have to do that and get in there and take care of those if you're gonna do that detail in there Ryfield just figure out how to get rid of those knockout pins please Our, your model uh, people would your buyers and your consumers would enjoy that um, really nice hinges so that looks pretty good Okay, getting to the bottom of the box Okay, a little package here, and okay, we've got decals, they look really nice, they look flat, um, they're not glossy, they're flat, I don't know who prints them for them, printed in China, so they must either print their own or have somebody in China print them, so I'm sure they'll be okay, uh, most modern models I haven't seen anything with bad decals, I think a lot of companies have gotten beyond that. The technology has figured it out how to not make a crummy decal. But I made my words when I use them. So, And here's the photo etched set. And that's got uh, some little basket detail here. Um, some chains, uh, which I'll probably replace with real miniature chain. But, wow, that looks really nice. Again, that's a real nice add-on. You know, that's a 20 or $30 sheet of photo etch right there hinges even with the little hinge marks so that'll be interesting real clean um, it does not have the sticky plastic on it like some of the trumpeter kits and so forth which I really like because you can cut out individual pieces and not have to worry about other things flying around or getting bent um, so that would be kind of nice if they skin this all right and last but not least is the instructions. Okay, so nice looking instructions of color. Gives you assembly icons of what means what. And so we got first page is all the sprues listed. Um, they do use color. Uh, this is kind of nice. A lot of companies are catching on to this, where they have color marks where the glue goes. So if you're kind of confused how something attaches, this is telling you exactly where the pieces are butting up against each other and where to place the glue. So very good that they do that. Even on these little ones, it shows you where to place the glue and where exactly it goes. Sometimes those arrows, when they have to cross through something, get kind of confusing and you don't know where the thing goes. This, you definitely know where everything goes. Kudos to, to them for doing that. And then the photo etch is actually printed in yellow. Again, very, very cool. Okay, nice thick paper. And there's the chassis going on and the transmission. Um, they do show um, the new parts in blue here, so you actually build them here and then put them on here, I'm assuming. And then they tell you where to cut pieces. Okay, moving along. There's a no glue piece. They do, obviously, the suspension might partially work. Um, okay. That's my uh, dehydrator going off. Telling me that the stuff's done and ready to take out. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. I got multiple projects going on. Um, they talk about doing the assembly and what to do and what not to do. It says if you need to install the resin tires, do not assemble 34, 49, 50 parts. Very excellent. So they are telling you that if you buy their resin wheels, you don't use the hubs that are on the kit. That's nice. You don't have to accidentally glue them on and then rip them off to get the resin on. They're telling you what's going on. And then optionals. Uh, looks like more of the engine work. All right. Again, with the color, they're giving you exactly where everything goes. Since everything's so small, it's good to have those guidelines. And then here's a uh, cat image of the engine and the exhaust system that uses in the air system, the air induction system. 
uh, putting on the wheels so you're actually almost done with the chassis and then you start on the body so it's a separate component just like on the real thing okay lots of photo etch on the interior all the electronics racks and so forth very cool okay man comprehensive book they're not doing too many steps at one time which is nice but it makes a thick book um, looks like doors uh, are opening or closing and a cat image there uh, there we go three piece you got your cabin your actual um, workspace and the chassis there and then putting on the fenders that's one thing about this vehicle is it's very modular so they can change all the stuff out so they actually built the model just like the real thing very modular and then here's the frame system here and again they're showing where to glue it where not to glue it and then some of the underbelly armor which again is thinned out which like I said is really really nice okay now the crow system with the machine guns very excellent excellent stuff there that's going to be real fun to build that machine gun and detail that out all right doing some we put the mesh in the grill work so I thought that was a basket but that's actually the uh, front grill and the hood does open showing all that stuff so again you'll have to get rid of those knockout pins uh, spare and then there is a color picture of the vehicle and it's all giving you MIG paint numbers um, ammo by MIG um, which is good I was hoping they would give you other brands but uh, there are uh, software downloads and um, apps for your phone that will actually match the different colors so if you go to this MIG color you can see what other colors are close in other brands so very good so overall I'm very impressed with the detail I mean over almost any other brand this detail is unmatched especially when it comes to the weapons and machine guns um, do not like the fact that there's no knockout pins everywhere and do not like the fact that there's a bit of flash on some of the small parts which is going to be hard to scrape without breaking them just going to have to be extra careful so anyways hopefully everything will fit just right that is a uh, look at what's in the box and what's in all the baggies and uh, that is all we got for that kit
Okay, Mouseworks fans, that's a wrap on that uh, model review of the Ryfield uh, MATV, their M1240A1 with the M153 Crows 2 machine gun on top. And all in all, it looks like a pretty nice kit. Uh, I do have my list of pros and cons. Uh, I'll go through that real quick. Uh, the, the pros are excellent, excellent detail. I mean, unsurpassed by a lot of other companies. Uh, it'd be nice to weather and detail and dry brush and all that stuff. Uh, I like the fact that they individually package each sprue. They don't have, except for one uh, baggie had two of the same sprue, but I, it gets real frustrating uh, if you've ever opened up an, a uh, kit from uh, Mini Art. There's just 80 sprues in one bag and they can rub against, at least they do them tight so they don't rub too bad. Some companies put four or five sprues in one bag and they rub against each other, parts get knocked off, and it can be a real pain in the neck. So having individually packaged sprues is very nice. I know it's a little, little bit more work for the company, but uh, it is appreciated by your consumers. Uh, the other thing is great instructions. I mean, that is probably one of the best set of instructions I've seen in a long time, where they were showing the glue points and different colors for the different types of materials. Um, not a, not very busy. Uh, each step didn't have too many parts, not too many arrows, so that was really refreshing. That'll make a nice build. Uh, the other thing is for a good price for what you get. The fact that you get the engine and interior uh, is really nice. I mean, it's uh, uh, I think this kit on the market is about 60 bucks, so that's not bad at all considering if you had to buy the vehicle and then the detail sets uh, to upgrade it would be almost over a hundred dollars so anyways uh the cons um only ammo uh by mig colors which i know they have a probably deal with uh ammo by mig but uh would be nice if they gave a couple other color call outs either gunzi or uh tamias so Anyways, uh, if you're experienced, you can look other things up. But if for somebody who just wants to start with this kit, they'll be very confused because they only have one choice. Uh, the other thing is knockout pins everywhere, including on the inside of the hood. Um, there are companies that have been able to avoid these by putting little knockout pins off to the side and then have a little injector mark piece that actually goes to the, the part itself. Uh, those seem to work really well. Um, but if they could work on getting rid of some of those because they are all over. Now I know that helps the molding process and makes it so they pop out clean and, and without warpage, but uh, uh, hopefully they can address that. Uh, lots of flash. I mean, there's flash on almost every part. Uh, those wires and so forth, they're gonna be a little tedious to scrape the flash off. Definitely can't sand it. You're gonna have to scrape it or do something, soften it with some uh, model glue and kind of wear it down with the model glue that's another trick that uh, can be done with those so but that's kind of a, a pain to do um let's see oh the last is the tires vinyl tires and the vinyl mud flaps okay neato that it's vinyl but whatever um, most modelers would like plastic and they would also like the wheels to be uh weighted where they are actually slightly bulged and flat on the bottom uh, no vehicle gets away with round bouncy tires so um, I wish a lot of companies would address that as well whenever you have a vehicle that's over five four or five tons uh, this one's probably a little lighter but it would still have very uh, flattened tires or uh, bulge tires so that would be something that uh, I would really like to see the companies address as well or give you both why not both add you know a couple bucks to the kit and give you both so Anyways, all in all, it looks like a very promising kit. I've never, like I said, seen a Ryfield model, uh, except uh, just going through the uh, boxes and some of the pictures on the internet. But uh, now that I've really gone through one step by step, I'm pretty impressed. It's, it looks like it's gonna be a fun build. It's gonna be kind of a complex build. I'll have to be painting here and there. You can't do it like a piece of armor tank where you can actually build the whole thing and then paint it. So, so anyways, that's a wrap on that. And uh, as always, please subscribe, like this video, and hit the bell. And that way you'll get all my updates of all my videos the minute they post. So, as always, I will see you next time.